tender emotion, the father spoke to me as the angel Gabriel. Go, Gabriel, go and tell Mary. And so on a wave of worship, I flew. I circled through the clouds and over the ground. Below me, there was a city where Mary was born. The father was right. I knew her in an instant. Her heart had no shadow. Her, her soul was as pure as any that I had ever seen. I made the final descent. M Mary, I kept my voice low, so low, so as not to startle her. Greetings, God be with you. Her eyes widened and she turned as if to run. Mary, Mary, have no fear. You have found favor with God. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great and he'll be called the son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will rule Jacob's house forever. There will never be an end to his kingdom. Though she was listening, she was puzzled. But how? I've never slept with a man. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will hover over you. Therefore, the child that you bring to birth will be called Holy, Son of God. Nothing, you see, is impossible with God. I looked at her and she was smiling. Yes, I see it all now. I'm the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me, just as you say.
God, O oh infant God, heaven's fairest child, sleep well. Enjoy the silence of the crib, for the noise of confusion rumbles in your future. Savor the sweet safety of my arms, for a day is soon coming when I cannot protect you. Rest well, tiny hands, for though you belong to a king, you will touch no Satan, own no gold, you will grasp no pen, guide no brush. Your hands are not destined to hold a scepter, nor wave from a palace balcony. They are reserved instead for a Roman spike that will staple them to a Roman cross. Sleep deeply, tiny eyes. Sleep while you can, for soon the blurriness will clear and you will see the mess we have made of your world. Lay still, tiny mouth, from which eternity will speak, tiny tongue that will soon summon the dead, that will define grace, that will silence our foolishness, and tiny feet cupped in the palm of my hand. Rest, for many difficult steps lie ahead for you. Rest today so that tomorrow you might walk with power. Rest, for millions will follow your steps. It was an ordinary night, with ordinary sheep and ordinary shepherds. Then the black sky exploded with brightness. Trees that had been shadows jumped into clarity. Sheep that had been silent became a chorus of curiosity. One minute, the shepherds were dead asleep. The next, they were rubbing their eyes and they were staring into the face of an alien. The night was ordinary no more.
The announcement regarding the Messiah's arrival went first to some shepherds. They didn't ask God if he was sure. He knew what he was doing. Had the angel gone to theologians, they would have first consulted their commentaries. Had he gone to the elite, they would have looked around to see if anyone was watching. Had he gone to the successful, they would have first looked at their calendars. So he went to the shepherds, men who didn't have a reputation to protect, or an ax to grind, or a ladder to climb, men who didn't know enough to tell God that angels don't sing to sheep, and the messiahs aren't found wrapped in rags and sleeping in a feeding trough. So at the birth of Jesus, while the theologians were sleeping, and the elite were dreaming, and the successful were snoring, the meek were kneeling, they were kneeling before the one only the meek will see. They were kneeling in front of Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, during the time of King Herod, who was the king at the time, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been called the King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. After they were told that Christ was to be born in Bethlehem of Judea, they went on their way, and the star that they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped. It stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy.
on coming to the house, the Magi saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. Suppose you could give a gift to Christ, what would it be? How could you possibly select a gift for the one who not only has everything, but who made everything? Emmanuel, God is with us. Have you seen him? Those who first did were never the same. My Lord and my God, cried his apostle Thomas. I have seen the Lord, exclaimed Mary Magdalene. We have seen his glory, declared John. But Peter said it best. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. His majesty the emperor of Judah, the soaring eagle of eternity, the noble admiral of the kingdom, all the splendor of heaven revealed in a human body. For a period of time, ever so brief, the doors of the th throne room of heaven were open, and God came near. His majesty was seen. Heaven touched the earth, and as a result, earth can know heaven. In an astounding tandem, a human body housed divinity. Holiness and earthliness intertwined. Yes, God came near. And we can be eyewitnesses of his glorious majesty.
And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, it is now time to give back to the Lord. Let us give from our abundance as the ushers wait on us for the morning offering. 